I want to talk about a strongly connected uh, components. So, say you were given a graph, you know, a directed graph, and then you were asked to find uh, strongly connected components. Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to walk you through an example in this tutorial. Well, first of all, what does strongly connected mean? Okay, strongly connected. Uh, strongly connected. All that means is that any vertex, every vertex. is reachable from every other vertex okay so that means okay but what what does strongly connected components mean well all that means is that <coughs> if you're given a graph G right with vertices and edges then strongly connected component is just a subgraph within this graph G that are uh, strongly connected that's all that means. So let me walk you through an example and uh, things will be a lot uh, a lot more clear okay so here's a graph we're given this directed graph Okay, so how do you approach a strongly connected component problem? Well, if you're given a graph something like this, what you do is you do a DFS on it, okay? But the way I like to approach this problem is a little different than um, other tutorials I've seen. So the way I like to do it is to do a DFS on the transpose of this graph first, okay? And all that means is just reversing the edges. So let me make the uh, the graph transpose of this. Um, let me make the transpose of this graph above, okay, down here. You guys can fast forward this if you want to, but a little bit quick. A, B, C, D. Let me scroll up. Uh, e, F, G, oops, and H. So transpose this means that we just reverse every edge that are in this original graph. Okay and you gotta be very careful when you do this you can't make any mistake because <coughs> if you make one mistake you potentially mess up your answer so I encourage all of you guys to double check your work so in your, in your uh, original graph above we see arrow coming from A to B so what we want to do is reverse that so we're gonna go from B to A same from A to um, E to E E to A we're gonna reverse that to A to E and so on uh, do you guys get the picture of what transpose of a graph means? All right. There we go. Just point it backwards. Is it reversed? Points to H, and this points to C. All right, let me just double check everything. Make sure it's correct. It to be. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, I think we're in business. So, so this is the way I like to do it. So I create this uh, graph transpose first, and then I do DFS on this graph first. If you don't know what that means, just look at other tutorials, or I'm going to upload one soon. So what you do is you start at a vertex. Okay, let's start from vertex A. So this vertex A is discovered in time 1. Okay, then you put a slash under. Then you look at the outgoing edges that are coming from A. We can see that A can go to E. Okay, it can't go anywhere else in this graph. So we go to E, and then E is discovered time 2. And then E can go to F. It can't go anywhere else because there's no other arrows coming out from E. So then F is discovered at time 3. And similarly for F. But F go has two edges coming out of it to B and A. But we've already been to B. So we already been to A, I'm sorry. And then, uh, so we can't go to A again. So we go to B, and B is discovered the time 4. And the same thing applies to B as it did for F. B can go to A, but B has an arrow going to A, but we can't go to A because we've already been there. Okay, so we finish the time 5, and we go back to its predecessor, F. And we check if there are any other edges going out. And it, there isn't, so we finish F at time 6, 
and we go back to its predecessor which is E and we finish that at time 7 for same reasons as F and B and we go back to A and we finish that at time 8 okay so now <coughs> what do you do after that okay you finish the uh, the timings then you jump to the next vertex which is C and you start where the uh, the last uh, vertex finished so the A finished at 8 so you start C at 9 so C is discovered at time 9 then you apply the same method as you did for previous vertex which is you look at the outgoing edges coming from C in this case there are two to G and B we can go to B because we already been to B it's already been discovered and so we go to G and so G is discovered at time 10 now same thing G can go has arrows to F and H We've been to F, so we can't go to uh, F, and he has a uh, arrow back to C. We can't do that either, because we're already been to C. So we go to H, and H is discovered at time 11. So now H has no arrows going out of it, so we're done uh, with that vertex, so we finish that at time 12. We go back to its predecessor, and G is done at time 13, because we can go anywhere else, because we've already been to every other vertex that G can go to. Go back to its predecessor, and that's done at time 14. And then... So we're done with this. Okay, there's no other uh, edges that we can uh, vertexes we can go to from C. So then we pick up where we left off. So D starts at time 15, and then we already been to C, so we can go to C, and that's the only edge that's coming out from D. So we finish that at time 16. Now, if you had two of these types of vert uh, vertices, like if H was pointing at G, it doesn't matter which one you chose as your um, next vertex first it wouldn't matter so now we have done a DFS on this transpose of the original graph so now what do we do is write down let me go let me scroll back up a little bit and I'm gonna write down the order of which the uh, the vertex is finished from greatest to uh, least so in this uh, instance we forget about the numerator we only worry about the denominator so looks like the uh, D finished last so we write down D first let me change the color so D was the first one to go we get last one to finish so we write that down and then next one will be 15 15 is on top so we don't worry about that so the next uh, number down is 14 it's on the bottom so that's good we write C down we move on so now we're looking for 13 which is at the bottom that's good and that's G we write down G and we move on Okay, and then the next number we're looking for is 12, which is on the bottom as well, so that's H. We write that down, and then we look for 11, which is on top, so we don't write that down. We want the uh, number we're looking for to be at the de denominator. So the next number down is 10, which is also a numerator, so we move on to the next one, which is 9. And 9 is on top, so 8A, 7, we do have a 7, yes, that's E. We have a six. That's yes. That's a F, and then five. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then B. So this will be our guide to for DFS on the original graph. Let me scroll up again. All right, I'm gonna change the color just for the sake of clarity. So now what this is telling us is that we're gonna start DFS on this original graph from. D. So D on the original graph is discovered at time 1. Okay? And then D has no edges going out anywhere, so it also finishes it at time 2. We cross that off the list. Now we, the next uh, vertex up is C. So we finish D at time 2, we start off uh, C with 3. Okay? Now we notice that C has an edge going to D and to G. D we can go to because we've already been there, therefore we go to G, and G is discovered at time 4. Right. The only arrow coming from G is back to C. Okay, And we can't go there because we've already been there and it has no other just coming out. So we finish G at time 5, we go back to its predecessor once it's finished, and we look at C, look at any other possibilities, there are none, so we finish C at time 6. Okay, so we've crossed off C and G, and this will be, you can kind of see that this will be a strongly connected component, and this will be a strongly connected component. Every time you cross off something from the list, you could be sure that that's going to be a strongly connected component of this graph. So now next up is H. H, so we start off 
uh, 7 discovery because the C was the last one to finish at time 6. So H, again, it has only error going to G, which has already been discovered, so we finished that time 8. So we cross that out from the list, and that's also going to be a strongly connected component. Next up is A. So we go to A, and with A is discovered at time 9. We look at its outgoing edges, and we see that it points to B or F. You can go to either one, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we go to B, let's just... I'm going to choose to go to B, and B is discovered at time 10. Okay, B has the outgoing edges to C, which we've already been to, so we can't go there. And it has outgoing F, uh, edges to F, which we haven't been to yet. So F is discovered at time 11. Look at F. F can go to, has the edge going to G and E. G already we've been to, E we haven't, so we go to E. And that's discovered at time uh, 12. Okay? And same thing here, E has the arrow uh, edge going to A, we've already been there, there's no other arrows coming out from E, <coughs> so we finished that at time 13. We go back to its predecessor, look at any other possibilities, there are none, so that's going to be done at time 14. Go back to its predecessors, that's going to be done at time 15, and then go back to its predecessor, and that's going to be done at time 16. So we cross that off the list, and that's going to be our uh, next set of uh, strongly connected components. So we can kind of Cinema chooses a different color to outline it. So this is a strongly connected component. Right here. These are strongly connected components. These are strongly connected components by themselves and so is the H. So then next step to do and the last step is to do is to just simply write them down in a, in a list. So I'm pick another color. Ah, let's go with pink. So one set, uh, one set of strongly connected component is A, B, E, and F. Next set is C and G. Then we have D, and finally H. So these are strongly connected components of this original graph, which are subgraphs within this graph, which is what it, what I meant by the definition up here.